Now, from Wish TV, this is The Zone Extra, presented by Franciscan Health Sports Medicine. Coming up tonight, tickets are punched to state in boys basketball. Ben Davis will have a chance to play for back-to-back state championships. In the coach's corner, as the new season begins, we're joined by the woman leading a top 10 softball team at Mooresville. Plus, our Athlete of the Week just helped Fishers reach the state final in boys basketball for the first time in program history. It's going to be crazy looking out there, seeing everybody who's there to support me, all my family, all my friends. It's time to tip things off. The Zone Extra starts now. Hi, everybody. Good evening to you. Welcome to The Zone Extra. I'm Anthony Calhoun. What a great week of high school sports across the state with plenty of basketball action as teams earn their way into the state finals. In the coach's corner, as softball season begins, we're joined by the head coach of the eighth ranked Mooresville Pioneers. Tracy Ball is here in studio for a great conversation. Can't wait for that. Plus our athlete of the week helped lead Fisher's boys basketball to a first state finals appearance. Lead Tigers senior Keenan Gardner. Plus, don't miss our latest edition of Ask the Commissioner with Paul Nydig of the IHSAA. Now, let's take a look at this week in high school sports. Saturday in a 4A basketball semi-state matchup. Fishers facing Wayne out of Fort Wayne and tied at halftime, but Fishers comes out of the gate hot in the third quarter here. You got Keenan Gardner. Gets it there to John Anthony Hall, who scores and draws the foul. Tigers up seven a minute later here. It is a Millen McCartney hits the three for the Tigers there. Fishers is going to state. They get it done. Final score, 69 to 61. To be able to do it for our community, for, for all our school, it's really special. But what I keep telling these guys is I'm just excited about still being able to go to practice and go to work. You know, it's, it's probably one of the most fun groups I've ever been around. They come to work every day. They love being around each other. They're fun, but still work hard. So for me, it's just, I don't want it to end. I don't want the process to end. So I'm just really excited that we're still, we're still going to work together. Congratulations to Fishers. Okay, in the other four-way semi-state title game featured Ben Davis taking on Jeffersonville. This was a great game. Final minute, folks. Giants down two. Mark Zachary draws the foul after the score there. Ben Davis ties the game. We're not done hearing from Zachary. Final seconds, Giants up one. Zachary seals it there with the block at the buzzer. The defending champs win it 52 to 51. Ben Davis will play Fishers in the 4A state title game. You know, to the tail end of it, our guys just wanted a little bit more. Um, they made the plays that need to be made. Uh, KJ went with a big steal. Uh, Ramon Enos with a big steal and one. Um, and then obviously Mark Zachary getting the block at the end. You know, you know, you go down six with a minute and a half to go. You know, you start looking at the crowds, looking at my wife, you know, like, oh my, you know, what's going on here? Uh, we just didn't look like ourselves, but, you know, it, it really shows a lot of character. And sometimes you gotta have a lucky game, and that was our lucky game on, on this run. So, uh, excited for our boys. We deserve to be back here. Yeah, congratulations to the Giants. Okay, in 3 8 Saturday matchup, Garen Catholic facing Scottsburg. And uh, final seconds of the third, you got Garen down eight. Not anymore. Dylan Moran's from the corner at the buzzer there. Golden Eagles within five. Scottsburg, though, uh, they, they did pull away through it in the fourth, though. How about that pass there to Cody Clancy? He scores while getting fouled. Uh, Scottsburg ends Garen's season with a 70 to 54 victory. They get the win there, moving on state. Okay, moving to Class 2A, where multiple teams from the area look to punch their tickets to Gamebridge Fieldhouse and the state finals. At Southport, it was number one Brownstown Central taking on Park Heritage. And tie game in the first quarter. Jack Benter, hot from deep, knocks down the three there, his fourth there. You see it up. Uh, uh, Braves take the lead. Benter with 38 in the game. He was on fire. Third quarter we go and transition. It's a chance Coomer uh, who hits the triple there. Pushes the lead to double digits. Brownstown Central is on to state with a 66-56 win. We felt all the way back to last summer that, you know, we had one of the taking away cl any classes, we felt we had one of the top teams in the state mm -hmm. and had, had a chance to beat anybody in the state. When we've been healthy this year, our guys have you know, played really well throughout the year whenever we've had everybody together. And we, we've managed to continue to push through and, and win and compete when we've had guys miss also. 
All right, so congratulations to them. Okay, on the other side of the Class 2A is Wapahani here took on defending state champ Blackhawk Christian. Final seconds of regulation. Braves down two. Aiden Muldoon uh, takes it to the basket and lays it in. Uh, Blackhawk Christian sends it to overtime. Wapahani up two in the overtime. Isaac Andrews steps back and buries the three there. Raiders increase the lead and they're heading to state for the first time ever with a 60 to 40. 49 win. What I've been dreaming of my whole life, really, just uh, being able to play with these guys in the state tournament. I mean, it's been our goal, and we've put in the work to get here. Very special. 17 years at Wapahani. These are guys that I've grown up with. Every kid on our uh, varsity basketball team grew up with us. To have this opportunity to practice for two more weeks, play one more game, and play for the state championship in Indianapolis is thrilling and awesome. Oh, that's good stuff right there. Okay, in the Class 1A matchup, it was eighth ranked at Bethesda Christian taking on top ranked Barry. First quarter, Patriots looking good. Sam Mulligan here pulls up and hits the jumper. Bethesda up quickly by 10. Just before halftime, it's Mulligan again. This time off the glass is good, but that's a Christian up 17 at the break, and they win it 63 to 38 to reach the state finals for the first time in program history. It would just mean everything. Um, we've had such a great um, supportive fan base, um, and they've been with us every step of the way, and um, it's done so much for our school community, I think, um, that, I mean, it, it would just mean everything. The chemistry of this team is, I think, what separates us from um, who we've played lately and just helped us um, come out on top. Wow, job well done. Okay, in girls basketball, congratulations to Bedford North Lawrence senior Chloe Spring, who was named Indiana's Miss Basketball. Spring averaged over 20 points, seven rebounds, and three assists this season for the Stars. Next season, she will play ball, college basketball, that is, at Alabama. All the best to her. Congratulations once again. Okay, time for a break. We have much more coming your way tonight on the Zone Extra. Up next, it's the Coach's Corner, and we're talking softball. Mooresville coach Tracy Ball is here in studio for a conversation. Can't wait to talk to Coach. And still ahead, uh, his performance over the weekend helped lead his Tigers to state. We're going to introduce you to our Athlete of the Week from Fishers High School. This is the Zone Extra, presented by Franciscan Health Sports Medicine. This is the Zone Extra Coach's Corner. All right, we're back here on the Zone Extra. Anthony Callum here with you tonight. Time now for our Coach's Corner as the softball season begins. As she's leading a top 10 program at Mooresville. Welcome to the Zone Extra tonight. Pioneers head coach Tracy Balls here with us tonight. Great seeing you as always, thank you, Coach. And thank you. thank you so much for taking the time to join us. And the season is here. It is. Uh, I know you got a talented team. We'll dive into that in a moment. But okay. how excited are you just to get things going early on here in the season? It, it's kind of nice because we're getting ready to go on spring break. And it's always nice to get a couple couple games in before we go on break and see where we're at, and then we kick it really in gear when we get back from break. That's when the whole season starts going. So. Well, speaking of kicking it in gear, coming off a nice win just mm -hmm. a few days ago against Center Grove, take we us did. through that and just how did it feel to beat a very good team in the Trojans. Um, y you know, we, we lost a lot last year in talent-wise, but I didn't know what to expect coming in. But I did have our pitching staff back, so I knew that our pitchers would keep us in the game and I'm telling you Center Grove is tough top to bottom but yeah. um, our girls came out hitting the ball yesterday and the the junior class that kind of came in to replace the girls from last year really stepped up and and we had three girls hit home runs yesterday and we just really played well and I was very happy to see it. Okay, well, let's talk about your team. You talk about just getting that great win against Center Grove, but from what you've seen early on with the ladies here, what do you like about from what you're seeing on the field here with these ladies? I think it's confidence. They've um, they've been around the game for so long, and they play all the time, and I think they're just comfortable with who they are. Um, they're strong girls. They work out a lot in on their speed and their conditioning and in the weight room, and I think they're just very level-headed girls and they know what we can do and it's kind of nice to know that they're confident and they trust each other and that's a big deal that's a big part 
we know it's early, but when you look at what you have with this team here, what are some areas you feel like you all can grow at as well? Um, I think defensively. Um, we, we had to, like I said, we replaced a lot last year. Um, I think just working on our communication with each other, getting to know each other a little bit more. Um, we pretty much had to replace our outfield except one player, and so getting them used to communicating better in our infield, and um, that's probably one area that I feel like. Hitting-wise, I think we're pretty strong. We have yeah. some really strong hitters, so um, I think we're going to get better at that as the season progresses. Regional champs last year. Mm -hmm. I know you lost a lot of players, mm -hmm. but you do have a couple experience on the, with this year's team too. So, what do you, what do you lean on when you think about what you have coming back this year as you get ready to try to make a run for state? I, I'm really re relying on our pitching staff. Mm -hmm. uh, I think our pitchers are going to keep us in every single game that we play, um, and that's always something that positive to have. It, you know, a lot of oh, schools yeah. aren't that blessed. <laughs> yes, and, and the it. past, yep. you know, I'd say past seven or eight years we've been really blessed with some really good pitching and um, luckily they keep us in games and then we're able to kind of build on that and um, I think that's one thing that we're really going to rely on. What has impressed you the most of what you're seeing from your ladies right now? I think last night was their ability and their confidence to compete against a team like a Center Grove. Team, yeah. yeah and yeah. I, I think they, they really started to believe in themselves last night, mm. and I think that's what's going to get us, get us there to hopefully another sectional championship. Well, here we go. 20 <laughs> years, folks, at Mooresville. Um, what, what has kept you around me? What is it that you enjoy most about the job and you know, having that responsibility of working with these young ladies there at Mooresville? I, I think it's, I've been there so long that you kind of build a culture, mm. and We've got a culture of commitment, and the girls that play for our program are very, very committed to our program. And they do the things that are necessary to make us successful. Mm -hmm. And and it's hard to walk away from something like that. Once you get something going, I think, and, and we have a great um, athletic department that is just so supportive and provides us with the needs that we have. Yeah. And I never have to question that. If I need something, I'll just ask, and they usually provide it for That's me. Awesome. And yeah. so I think it's just that support I've had over the years and the culture that we've created and the girls are just 100% committed. That's great. Real quick, let's take a mm -hmm. look at this schedule if we can. Upcoming mm -hmm. schedule here for Lordsville. Run through this real quick, Coach. Oh. I know you got your hands full. Uh -huh. Got some big games coming up. We do. We do. Um, of course, we start conference as soon as we get back from break. Um, got Martinsville and Decatur. We're also going to Castle Invitational. And Castle is, oh, yeah. that is going to be a very, very <laughs> tough group yeah. to play. We play uh, Tecumseh who won state last oh, year. Yeah. Yeah. We play Penn who won state last year. Yeah. We play Fishers who's ranked. Uh, I mean we've got our, we've got our work cut out for us but I think that's going to be a good challenge for us. Well, well listen all the best to you guys Thank and, you. Um, and great seeing you and Thank say hello you. to that great student section there I will. at Mooresville. I will. Of course they won our zone banner many years ago yes. but um, they're always great. And yes. I know they're cheering on your team as well. Thank so. you very much for okay. having me. We're going to take a break. Coming up here still more coming your way tonight on the Zone Extra. It's our athlete of the week. He's uh, the leading scorer for a team making his first ever trip to state. Coming up meet Fisher's basketball uh, senior Keenan Gardner. Plus making history. How about this? Our Angela Morian has the story of a monumental moment for one basketball official earlier this month. This is the Zone Extra presented by Franciscan Health Sports Medicine. Welcome back to the Zone Extra. As you saw earlier in the show, Fishers in the boys basketball state finals for the first time in program history and senior Keenan Garner is a key reason for the Tigers success. Garner suffered an injury to his foot in the regional win over Kokomo, but battled through not one, but two games last weekend for the Tigers, including an eight point win over Fort Wayne. Wayne in the semi state championship where he led the team with 16 points and seven rebounds. Even though it was tough, Keenan says he was determined to be out there on the floor, if at all possible, with his teammates. Obviously, I, I was uh, in a lot of pain, but I could have never done that with my teammates. I mean, everybody stepped up and hit shots. Everybody played well. And I just saw how hard we worked the entire season, and I wasn't going to let that 
stop because I have a little injury. This kid's an absolute warrior. To, I mean, he, he, he's getting better, but to play through two games, I mean, to play through one game is one thing, but to play through two games, have 15 points and however many rebounds he had in the semi-state championship, it's pretty awesome. Last year, we didn't really have as much success as we wanted to. Um, having to like go through the whole like summer, spring, and uh, not being able to play for a state championship, and really using that as motivation, it's just been a lot of fun coming into practice with these guys. And I'm sad it has to end in two weeks, but hopefully we end it with the ring. This year, he got every single vote in the program for to be the captain freshman through varsity. So all 35 guys in the program, the one name they wrote down was Keenan. So that just speaks to who he is as a person, his leadership, his vocal leadership, how hard he works. I can imagine it's going to be unlike anything I've ever felt before. It's going to be crazy looking out there, seeing everybody who's there to support me, all my family, all my friends, and then looking over and seeing my teammates there with me, the people I started with, uh, how hard we worked, just to see that it's all paid off, and hopefully it'll pay off for us with, uh, with a win that Saturday, but just to be there and then uh, enjoy that with my teammates. Oh, that's going to be a good time. We got Fishers, Ben Davis, ready to go to work. Time for a break. More coming your way on the Zone Extra tonight, including our newest edition of Ask the Commissioner with Paul Nidig. That's on the way. This is the Zone Extra, presented by Franciscan Health Sports Medicine. We're back. History was made this month in Frankfurt as Indy native Lachelle Hatcher became the first woman to ever officiate a boys basketball regional in the state of Indiana. Our Angela Morian talked to Hatchard about her monumental moment. There was um, another assigner at that time that said women can't do boys basketball. I took that as a challenge. A lot of history was made during this year's boys basketball regionals. First time champions, record breakers. <laughs> Up in Frankfurt, it was an official making history. Lachelle Hatcher, the first woman to ever ref a boys regional. They were awesome up there. There were people that actually came up there to see me, and I thought that was cool. Um, it was just really humbling. That's just really what it was. And it's like you don't really set out to do this. You just continue to do what you're doing, and then I was just happy to be seen. Hatcher never played basketball, but over 20 years ago, her Indianapolis Church League needed refs. She's been putting her own mark on Indiana basketball ever since. When the coaches is asking, are asking you a question like, hey, that wasn't a foul and this and this and this and that, and then I was like, coach, you're right. It, I, I, from my position, this is what I saw. And I'll tell him, I said, hey, I just got my eyelashes done. <laughs> my glue didn't dry yet, so <laughs> I might have missed that. <laughs> Hatchers earned the respect of not just those coaches, but the entire IHSAA as well. Michelle's worked hard to become a really good official, and, and she's there because she deserves to be there. Uh, not just because she's a female and we're really proud of her and the work that she's done. I think it's great to go ahead and try to blaze the trail, but I'd really would like to see what's coming behind me because it makes no difference to me if it's just me. I just want to be able to bring other women that come behind me and make their uh, make their struggles a lot less. Now that Hatcher's ref the regionals, she has a chance to make even more history in the future. If she's ever selected to officiate the boys state championships here at Gamebridge Fieldhouse, she'll be the first woman to ever do that as well. I'm Angela Morian for Wish TV, WishTV.com, or follow us on Facebook for updates. Angela, thanks a lot. What a great story right there. Okay, now it's time to ask the commissioner. Each week, we take one of your questions to IHSA Commissioner Paul Nidig. Here's this week's question, everybody. Between high school, college, and the NBA, how much basketball will you watch during the month of March? Well, it'll be a, a, my television probably won't tune to anything else other than basketball and has been uh, since the conference tournament started. And I always enjoy watching the game, but it, it, for me, it's about competition. And I love the student athletes uh, as they build the year, they build with, they start with goals, they build throughout the regular season, and then they want to put all that in place at the right time. And that's tournament time. And so you get the best of everything that they have, whether it be in the conference tournament or the teams that are lucky enough to make it to the March Madness, the big dance, so to speak. Always great to hear from the commissioner, everybody. Hey, thank you so much for watching The Zone Extra. I'm Anthony Calhoun. Of course, we're back here next week, same time same place, of course, same station, Wish TV. We'll see you.